All right. Hi, you're 11. This is Mr. Lim here again, and this is our third video on chemical bonding. So let's get started with metallic bonding. Okay, so we're going to be learning this. Okay, so let's start off with their properties. Okay, so electronegativity. So generally, metals have low electronegativity and low first ionization energy. This means that they don't hold on to their outermost electrons very well, okay, or very strongly. If they don't hold on to them, then what they're likely to do is actually lose them to other things. So when metal atoms are all together, they allow the electrons past their last complete p orbital to move around freely between atoms. So what does that mean? Oops, that's not where I want to go. All right, so here is a sodium atom. Okay, sodium. You've got electrons in the first energy level. You've got electrons in the second energy level. And the second energy level has the is the last energy level which has a full p orbital and a stable electron configuration. Which means that this poor guy, um, this electron here, is effectively the one that is not stable. Because all of this inside here is stable because it's got effectively a full p orbital. So what they do is that then they allow the electrons past their last complete p orbital to move around freely between atoms. So that last e here, it can go away. It can go fly away to somewhere else. And then leaves behind the, um, the sodium atom, which is now an ion because it has an imbalance of positive and negative charges. It now leaves that sodium ion behind as a stable substance. Okay, now it doesn't really leave it behind. Um, what effectively it does is just because that now these electrons that are free to roam are no longer associated with any one metal atom. All the other metal atoms are effectively metal ions. So effectively they all are ions. And they are surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. So sea, like the ocean, delocalized, meaning they're not local, which means that they're free to move everywhere, and electrons. So all these electrons, which are uh, been are beyond the final complete p orbital, right? They are free to move throughout the entire structure. Okay, so that's what it means by a sea of delocalized valence electrons. The metal ions form an organized lattice structure due to their repulsion of each other. Okay, because positive things repel each other. However, the also a sea of delocalized electrons repel each other, but attract neighboring metal ions to each other. Okay, so what does that look like? Let's look over here. Okay, so here is your lattice, which just means an organized structure of positive metal ions. And they're organized because they are all in nice, pretty lines. Okay, those electrons here shown in blue are the ones that are delocalized, which means that not associated with any one particular metal ion, they can move around freely. However, they repel each other, but they attract the um, positive metal ions. So these attract and pull these together. Okay, so each of these little green lines that I'm drawing is a pull holding those two things together. Okay, so they all attract each other. And so the two red ions are now attracted to, or all the red ions are all attracted to each other via all of these electrons pulling everywhere. And then if you have to, I have to imagine that all of these electrons are also moving around freely through the entire metal structure. Okay, and so they're holding them together. So the idea is that if you were to ask to describe the metallic structure, you would say it's a lattice of positive metal ions surrounded by a sea of delocalized valence electrons or delocalized electrons. The electrostatic attraction, which is the attraction between positive and negative things, between the positive metal ions and the sea of delocalized electrons hold the lattice of ions in place. Okay? So that's the metallic structure. Now, how does that explain the four properties that we went through in the last video? Let's have a look. So, malleability. Metals are malleable and ductile. You just need to remember that. This is due to the attraction that exists between the sea of delocalized valence electrons 
and the positive metal ions. They exist in all directions, and if the ions move, the attraction still exists. So what does that mean? Let's have a look. All right. So here you have um, the original on the left, and what you can see there is that here are all the positive metal ions. Okay. And then you apply a force. That's this thing here. Okay. When you apply the force, you'll notice that this top layer of ions move. They move towards the right. However, all of those electrons that are floating around are still there, which means they're still attracting all of these uh, ions to each other, right? No matter where they've moved. So because they're still attracting, you can move that top layer and all of the attraction will still exist. And so therefore you can change its shape permanently without breaking the substance. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, that's malleability, electrical conductivity. Metals can conduct electricity in both solid and liquid and molten forms. Okay, because they don't really dissolve in water, so you don't have to worry about aqueous. So the idea is that the sea of delocalized valence electrons can act like mobile charge particles in both solid and molten forms. Okay, so these little electrons, they are free to move wherever they want to go within the structure. Okay, so they can go, since they can go wherever they want, they can be mobile charged particles. All right. When, that's in solid form. When you get into molten form, these ions also have the ability to move around. So those can move around just like any liquid can. And because they're moving around as well, they can also act as mobile charged particles. Okay? So in solid form, it's the sea of delocalized electrons. And in molten form, it's the sea of delocalized electrons and the ions, the positive metal ions, which are also acting like mobile charged particles. All right? Lastly, uh, metals have a high melting boiling point. Okay, high melting boiling point. This is due to the strong electrostatic attraction between the sea of delocalized electrons and the positive metal ions. Remember that the melting and boiling point is a measure of the strength of those bonds, and because it's strong, it requires a large amount of energy to overcome those bonds and therefore to melt or boil the substance. All right, so that is the structure of metal... Uh, metallic substances that's how their structure explains the um, properties that they have or ideally the properties are explained by the um, proposed structure that they have and so that's the idea behind how we're going to go through these we're going to go through other different types of bonding as well and then we'll see how we go by the end of it adios